the world of ransomware as it has changed and taken over our environments. How do you think that is shaping object storage and storage in general? Well, I mean, rans ransomware is a real, real problem. And um, I talk about it a hell of a lot. Mm. And, it, uh, and I think it's really, you've got to stress that it's it's not if you get hit, it's when you get hit. Mm -hmm. Because the I did a session with, I think it was uh, VMware and Veeam talking about the subject and the, the, the moderator had actually logged into a live web session that monitors all of the the hacks that are going on. And he, in that one hour session, I think that, you know, the, 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 the map had shown over 2 million hacks have been attempted across the world. Wow. In an hour, in an hour period, and you know, and I'm sure there's a lot of other stuff that wasn't being accounted for. Oh, sure, yeah. <clears throat> so it's, I mean, really, the only cure to ransomware is to lock your data. So it's you've got to be selective around how you lock your data because there's uh, some challenges with with worm storage, and that and that is that once you lock it, it's it's there for a set period of time. And you can't get rid of it unless you actually trash the whole storage system and kind of start again. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to be very careful about where you deploy that technology. You don't want to put that in a, you know, protecting a database, for example, you know, a, a very transactional database, because every time <clears throat> an update is saved, you know, you're going to be locking that right. and you're going to be creating another copy and another copy and another copy because it works at file level. The database file is probably in one, you know, it's a big database file. Sure. So for every transactional change, you would have a full backup of the whole, whole entire file copy sure. of your database, and that's yeah. just going to make spiral out of control. Yeah. So, really, putting it into the backup flow makes it a lot of sense because it's kind of your last resort. Um, the, the hackers have got quite clever. You know, they they would tend to attack your backup data first because you're less likely to spot that attack, and then go after your primary data. And by that point, you think, okay, you know, my primary data is now gone. At least I've got my backup, or hey, my backup's already gone. So that then puts the, <clears throat> you know, the the the, the criminals in the, on the front foot there. So protecting your backup, that is still the last resort. And I think uh, improving the way that you do your backups, doing more frequent backups if possible, you know, doing your incrementals. Um, I, I think that's that's the way. And then using the worm storage. On the back end is obviously where kind of Cloudian comes in. Hmm. Uh, you know, I think Veeam is the only guys that have really got it nailed on right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think the others are catching up a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Commvault are kind of there, and, but I think some of the others have just, you know, they haven't missed, missed the boat. They're all working on it. But right now, I, I would argue that the best solution for ransomware is a Veeam and Cloudian yeah. combined solution. And I'm, I'm working on projects to try and bring that solution to the to the mid market, to the lower market, mm. you know, for the Veeam customers that have only got one terabyte, it's going to be a bit daunting to put in a petabyte object storage system. Yeah, you only put, you know, <laughs> you know you've only got one terabyte of data to back up. But yeah. I'm putting together solutions that hopefully we can address that market as well and be able to just give you a ransomware vaccination, um, you know, for mm. your Veeam data or any other backup data. Mm -hmm. So it's it's um, I think it's really got to go up the agenda on the on the the IT. I'm not saying this just because of uh, you know we're gonna kind of no, 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 I hear you. but yeah. I think it's it's imperative that you know the organisations that have been attacked and what can happen. You saw with the Colonial Pipe oh, attack, yeah. right? I mean, queues and queues of cars. That was on the news in the UK, you know, and that is a relatively I would say like a like a outlier story for for the UK to cover. You know, it was kind of serious. Mm -hmm. Now we've had um, some of our NH NHS trusts attacked. Yeah. Now, you know, if patients can't be seen because the dirt has gone or been hijacked. Right. Now, what stretch of the imagination, any of the utilities companies providing power, um, you know, any, anything else on, on the, the, the private healthcare mm -hmm. providers, you know, government, I mean, it's scary, right? I mean, this, this could be a catastrophic situation. And, mm -hmm. and the, even the economic World Economic Forum said it's in the top sure. five list of threats, not just from an IT perspective, but, you know, to, to business. Uh, now, I have a... Worldwide economy. Yeah, I mean, I have a couple colleagues that I speak with that are with the FBI and the counterterrorism and um, cybercrime divisions, and we do conferences and lectures and stuff. And, um, you know, I'm also a cancer survivor. So I think about what would happen if tomorrow the Cancer Institute that I went to, you know, getting better, 
uh, all those records are gone, all the x-rays, there's no comparative things, and they don't care. I mean, they could give a rat's butt. They don't care. They're after the dollars, and, and if people die in the process, they really don't care.